What is up guys? So I'm gonna be making a video where I'm here showing you guys how to um, pretty much set up a dual igniter setup on your FC RX-7. Um, reasons why you do this is um, with the FC ignition coils which have um, trailing, uh, the trailing coils are toggle style and then the leading are wasted spark, um, meaning it just gets one signal and it shares a spark um, for the trailing. Um, the issue with the FC ignition coils is most aftermarket ECUs such as the Haltech, um, the Link which I'm using, and also uh, the Power FC which uh, some people still love and it is old but people like them. You are required to make this modification in order to get um, your FC uh, trailing coils to work since it's toggle style. If you don't want to do this, um, one of the actually the only aftermarket ECU that supports these toggle style trailing coils is the Mega Squirt. Um, the Mega Squirt's a great option. That's what I had, and honestly, it's a super awesome ECU. Um, out of the box, it supports trailing um, toggle style trailing coils, um, so you'll never have to worry about having to modify your trailing coils. Um, so in my case, I have a link and um, what you need is you're going to need either a soldering gun, some um, wire crimps, heat shrink, um, preferably a hacksaw or an angle grinder, um, and you're going to need two FC ignition coils. I, for some reason, have two of them. I don't know why, but I have two South uh, FC ignition coils. Um, and this is actually temporary for me. Um, I'm going with IGN 1As, uh, so direct fire, instead of having wasted uh, spark on the um, trailing coils, I'm gonna have direct fire on all. But again, that's gonna cost me almost upwards to $600 to $800 um, with mounting, wiring, and all of that. But for now, I just wanna get this car back on the road. And yeah. This is going to be my guide on how to do it. Here are my ignition coils. So the first thing I want to do is there's going to be eight Phillips heads. Um, for each one of these, I'm just going to start off with one. I just back these all out. So I'm just going to take them out on both sides. And then after that, we can cut the legs to one of those. And then we'll keep the other one. And you'll realize why we are doing that. But yeah. Now that I've taken off the screws, all eight of them on here, I want to take off this mounting bracket and we're going to attend to this um, coil um, first. So I'm just going to take these off and that way we are going to cut the legs off with our sawzall and I'll show you guys how I'm going to do that. Sawzall, whatever you want to do, um, all up to you. And they're kind of off. As you can see, it's nighttime because I have to go tend to some things. But have that off. I'm going to um, then remove the eight screws on here. And then I'll show you what we're going to do and which wires we're going to snip. Four screws holding the cover for each igniter. So I just pulled those off. And that way we can access all the wires. So I'm going to show you which wires we're going to snip off and remove. And ideally, I heard you want to solder these, so sadly that might be what I have to do in this case, but uh, let me go back and look up my reference, but yeah. All right, now that I have both of the covers off, um, we're stepping the yellow, gray, white, and then the light blue, so... to the igniter where we cut off the legs and um, there's these ring terminals so we're gonna pull them off I believe these are eight mils so let me just zap them off real quick and I remember the ring terminals so the tan and the blue one is for T2 
and then the tan and the black one is for T1. So they just chill over there. And yep. It is I just like pulled the wires out of the grommet. And then next up, all you do is you want to cut the pink wire as close to the connector and then the two tan wires leave some wire just in case you're going to need it so i'm going to do that real quick so once you've done so and you pulled out the things you'll have this blue ring terminal out the two tan wires which power the ignition coils out b1 or b plus b plus two whatever and then you'll have this whole thing out obviously this pink side will have a fair bit of wire so leave it there so those three should come out and then the next thing up is you want to cut the ends of these ring terminals so i'm just going to do that again leave a little bit of wire so when you cut off those terminals over there and you take off the sleeving this tan wire will come right off and then you'll be left with this site so you'll have these four wires sticking out and then next up we'll we'll show the magical part the fun part not really we have our whole stuff with the second igniter that we cut up um what you want to do is you want to take the gray and yellow wires that were on this four pin connector and slide them through and what we're going to do is we're going to connect them by either soldering them or crimping them together. So I'm just gonna do that and show you guys how that's gonna look. All right, crimp the two wires together. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna go on T2. I'm gonna take this cover off. I can, let's see. It's so hard to do it one-handed. And then you wanna take the tan wire off. We have our tan wire, prop that off T2, put that ring terminal back on, all right, and then we have that ring terminal. Next thing we do is we take that tan wire and we cut it. be fine and we'll keep it with our little collection and just pull that tan wire all the way back through the loom all right and then forget this part but <laughs> I'll be right back. We took that tan wire that we took off the T2 terminal and I routed it back inside here so then I stripped off some of the ends here and what we're gonna do is keep in mind on our igniter here um, that tan wire comes from this so one part's gonna be connected to the igniter itself and then we're gonna take this other half and connect it with the tan wire off the ones, off the igniter end that we cut the terminal off of. So you can butt crimp, solder them together, and bam. So let me go do that real quick. All right, so now that that's out of the way, um, we uh, crimp these and then whatever. Uh, off this four pin connector, there is a white wire. So if you look, Right here, remember we cut off the white wire on the um, coil pack. So if I can do it one handed, we can sneak it out. Ooh. Hold up, just, just, just one sec. Okay, rad, that's out. This white wire, again, white wire off the four pin connector connects to the pink wire on igniter two. So, if you were smart, you can see you want enough slack from the wires. So, we can go back to this harness that we had, right? And you can get some wire off there. 
whatever your golly heart desires, but there should be enough slack to get that white wire through. So I'm just gonna connect the two together. Don't feel like filming that, but yeah. All right, next up, we take this black connector and we connect the blue one to it. Just pull it out and then same thing goes. Oh yeah, I mean, we connected the pink to the white one, by the way, easy peasy. You want the most slack as possible. So if you remember, we had that four pin connector. So I'm just going to take the gray, gray wire and use it as the wire I'm going to extend it with. So three inches or so should be fine, but that should be plentiful. But yeah. All right, so we got that blue wire connected all the way to the black wire on the second, second igniter. So lastly, what you want to do is you want to go to um, T2. I'm, I'm actually, er, no, nah, no, nah, okay, okay, my bad, my bad, I had a brain fart. Remember, we saved these terminals, right? Um, you want to take one of those ring terminals, um, I believe it's one of these, right? And you want to, um, connect that one. Um, remember we took that off. So you want to connect that, um, to this last wire, which is this tan one. Um, and you want to extend it, uh, I think it's just a typical ring terminal. Black. No. I just want one of these. Yeah, it goes this way. Like that. Then you connect the ring terminal. If I can find it. With the nut. Zap it back on. And that, and with that, Remember, we have some extra wire laying around. So we're gonna take that, extend it, and then connect it to that tan wire that is over here. So once I do that, the wiring should be complete, I believe. So let me just do that real quick. Before you actually uh, connect that green terminal, I recommend um, actually routing it through this loom so you can retain the loom and then um, crimping it on. So yeah, that's just a little fun fact. Okay, so once you got all the wires all situated, they should round around like this. It may look like a mess. Just take those uh, short screws that you had. I believe it was the first eight that we removed or the other four from the mounting brackets and they actually fit perfectly. So I'm just gonna do that. Um, just put some wiring tape and whatnot and clean it up and we should see how it looks. Hey, I guess we're cool. Finish all the wiring, put some tape around here. This should do while I wait to get my IGN 1As. I just want to start my car up. And this should get it fired up. So I'm gonna wire that up in the car. And that's really it, boys and girls and homies. Thanks for watching, guys, and if you guys have any questions, just let me know. But, yeah, not a terrible job. Just some attention to detail. Obviously, this tape job is horrific and whatnot, but we'll do. Alrighty.